Hey you guys and welcome back. Um, I'm actually vlogging today, which I haven't vlogged, I feel like, in a long time. I think the last vlog I did was when we got our gym membership, which probably doesn't seem that long, but I'm used to vlogging throughout the week, like on and off. So it feels weird to have gone like, what, two, three weeks and not have vlogged at all? But um, yeah, today's a really busy day, so I thought I would bring you guys along with me. Uh, I'm gonna give some life updates. I'm gonna talk about therapy and I have an update on my job and I'm gonna talk about that. So stick around you guys. If you are not subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe. I am so close to 200 subs and that makes my heart so happy. I really appreciate it. Uh, and then also give the video a thumbs up and yeah, turn on your notification bell so that you get notified anytime I upload. But I guess first thing first that I wanna say is that my son, Gavin, turns 18 today, you guys. Like, I can't even process that. I'm trying not to let myself really think about it, but <laughs> he's 18. Like, I'm the owner of an adult. I can't even, I can't even like think about that. Because I feel like I haven't even been able to fully grow up yet myself. I don't feel like I'm fully mature, fully an adult. I still feel like I have a lot to learn, a lot to grow. Um, yeah, but I feel like when it finally does hit me, I'm gonna start crying my eyes out, which is, I guess, good because I'm trying a new foundation uh, and I'm doing a wear test, so yeah, I guess. <laughs> Crying my eyes out because my son is 18 is gonna really put this waterproof foundation to a test. We're not gonna be giving him his present until probably Wednesday because that's when the money hits the bank. Uh, because we're getting him a little bit something larger. Well, actually, it's a lot. It's like three times the normal amount that we spend on the kids' birthdays. But he, you know, he's 18. It's a big deal. But we need, I have an itch. Uh, we need the money on Wednesday, so it's just not worked out that we can buy it for his actual birthday. But we're gonna have cake and ice cream tonight, and then we're also, I think Anthony's picking up pizza. I believe that's what's happening, and then yeah, my parents are coming over, and it's just gonna be a really chill, like, laid back birthday for him, because he's having two parties. He's having a friend party, which he's doing laser tag with, and then he's having a family party, which, is obviously what it is, a family birthday party, but I don't know when either is because I don't pay attention. And then I guess the next one, and I feel like this is the big, big, big one for me, um, I am quitting my job. If you guys don't know, I have talked about it in previous videos. Uh, if you've watched any of my get ready's with me, you've probably noticed the products, but I've kind of gotten away with it and I've honestly deleted a lot of the videos that had a lot to do with it. But I was doing direct sales with an MLM, which is a multi-level marketing company. Uh, I'm, at, I'm at Starbucks, so give me just a second. Oh, do you hear my window? <laughs> I have a warranty on my truck that I need to go, I keep getting notification and it has something to do with my window. I'm wearing hot pink lipstick and I'm so afraid I'm gonna get it all over my teeth. Thank you, thanks you too. All right, now I need to fix my cup. Is anybody else really weird about this where you have to have like all of your Starbucks things aligned? <laughs> that window, oh my gosh. I need, I don't know, like I always feel like they mess it up when they don't have it lined up. It really, really bothers me. Okay, so now I need to go to the gas station and get gas before I leave town. Um, but yeah, so anyway, so I was selling, I was doing direct sales uh, with an MLM with Unique. They did the cosmetics and the beauty, sort of like skincare and makeup. And they started selling, selling fragrances, which I thought was really odd. I'm gonna make an entire video on my experience and my motivation behind quitting. So if you're interested in direct sales or multi-level marketing um, or unique and my personal opinion of them, 
and why I feel the need to quit them after working for them for two years, stay tuned for that video. I think it's going to be a really big deal. Um, yeah, it's probably going to be pretty dramatic. Um, but yeah, Anthony and I, we've talked about it and we both came to the conclusion that even though, you know, I was experiencing a great deal of success and I was making really good money uh, doing it, but I just, I don't know. I feel like I've outgrown them, I guess, is the basic, like, most simple way I can explain it, but there's a lot more going on than just that. But yeah, so I'm quitting that job. Um, I still have a couple of people that I need to get a hold of first and let them know that I'm quitting. So I might not put this video up until I get to do that, which hopefully I do today. I've let a couple people know, but I've got two people in particular that I'm kind of nervous about telling. Then I'm just going to focus on YouTube, which probably sounds like whatever. I'm not making money at it, but I really have uncovered a deep passion that I have for beauty even though I'm like not great at it I'm still gonna do my vlogs I'm still gonna do my challenges and my sit down videos and things like that but I'm gonna try to add a lot more beauty into it because I wanted to start doing like beauty reviews like testing the foundation like I am today oh, excuse me or um, like trying new palettes like obviously I am not a makeup artist <laughs> I have you know limited skill and ability I think that I'm increasing my skill and ability I watch a lot of YouTube videos I practice a lot of techniques I'm kind of thinking that I want my channel to embrace a lot of like your everyday non makeup artist type videos with like what I would do with the palette so, I don't know, that's just kind of like my idea. It could suck, it could be wrong, but if you guys have any suggestions or any like makeup items that you want to see reviewed or used or me attempt to use, uh, definitely comment down below and let me know. But with giving more time to YouTube, because um, I'm gonna start creating a schedule and I'm hoping to start like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, because right now I just kind of like upload whenever I want, whatever I want. And I want more of like a structure. With not working with Unique anymore, I think it's gonna open opportunities for me to work. So that's, that's I guess like that big update. Then I guess like the other thing that I've got going on, which I'm gonna label this as a mental health slash life update vlog. Um, I'm actually on my way to Peru right now. I have med clinic, which I have not been to med clinic in a couple of months and I missed my last appointment which has had me not on my meds for like almost a month. That means like no Xanax, no Prozac, nothing. But I'm nervous about going to med clinic because I have gained a lot of weight and I cannot stop. And honestly, it's my own fault. I, I need to talk about this, but I'm not gonna talk about it right now because I'm about to go get gas. And then I have to go head to Peru and then I also think that I have uh, therapy today, so that has me going to Logan Sport. And I won't be getting home until like early evening, which sucks since it's Gavin's birthday, but whatever. But I'll try to like sit after med clinic and kind of talk to you guys what's going on about my weight and my mentality and all of that stuff because I really do feel like it's kind of a huge deal that I'm struggling with right now. And it's definitely creating some major issues in my day-to-day -day, like functionality. <laughs> it's just bad, I don't know. I'm curious to know like how many people who are in recovery, like how many of you guys deal with this? <laughs> well, I am right next to the gas station, so I'm gonna go ahead and go, but um, I'll try to pop in after med clinic so that I can kind of give you guys an update about that. My stomach hurts like super, duper bad. I don't know if it is the way I've been eating and how crappy it's been or if it's the fact that I haven't pooped for like two weeks because I abuse laxatives so badly that they don't even have an effect on me anymore or if it's the fact that I'm really nervous and I have like butterflies in my stomach. But all right, well, I will check back in with you guys in a little bit. <laughs> Trying to fix my hair, it's so windy. All right, I did want to say this really fast. I feel like an idiot because I don't know like the legal age of doing anything because one, I'm old <laughs> 
and I'm surpassed. I've surpassed all of those ages, but then also too, like I never did anything legally of age anyhow. Oh, that's really good. Anyway, so I went into the gas station and I was like, hey, so how old do you have to be to get a lottery ticket? Because I thought with Gavin turning 18, it would be fun for him to get his first lottery ticket. I'm pretty sure I bought my first lottery ticket at 18, but I also had a fake ID. But yeah, I guess he had to be 21, so there goes that. Then also, I wanna gripe for a second, because this really, why do I not, wait. What is going on? I don't have a number on my, my radio doesn't have a, a like a time, it doesn't have a clock. I thought Anthony fixed my radio because it wasn't playing CDs. Okay, now it's playing Post Malone. I'm confused. If I hit it, <laughs> does that do anything? Work! All right, whatever. Anyway, sorry, that kind of distracted me that my clock doesn't have a number on it. Like the whole digital screen is completely blank and I don't know. Come on! I don't know why. Anyway, so what I was gonna say is I really hate getting gas. And I don't know where how it is everywhere else, but in Indiana, you have to pay in advance. Well, I don't like to pay with card. I don't know why, it just kind of freaks me out. So I always go inside to pay. Um, but I hate how when you're pumping gas and it's really cold like today, like I, I swear, it's gotta be like five degrees and then some kind of like wind chill of like two. And I don't think I'm honestly exaggerating. But I hate when you're pumping gas and you get within like a dollar to the end of your prepaid gas that you're pumping and it like slows way down. It used to slow down when it got to like 85 cents or 90 cents, but I was pumping gas and I only put $15, $15 in and it got to like $14 and 20 cents and it was going like half the speed. So I was standing there freezing my tatas off well, it's like tick, tick, tick with each zip value. I'm like, just freaking pump. I'm running late. But yeah, I just wanted to rant for a second. That kind of just pisses me off. It doesn't bother me when it's summertime, but when it's cold outside, like I don't want to freeze while I'm pumping gas, okay? But then I'm always terrified when I'm freezing because I don't want to get into my car while I'm pumping gas because I don't know I always thought like if you got in your car you could set off like a static spark and then like you would spontaneously combust or something or you would start some kind of like crazy gasoline fire I don't know it's probably not true it's probably just like an urban myth or something but yeah I don't use my cell phone when I'm pumping gas I don't have my car running when I'm pumping gas and I don't get in and out of my car when I'm pumping gas because that shit really scares me all right, now I'm seriously gonna go. I am like so freaking late and I just need to focus on the road, but I will see you guys in a little bit. Okay, so real fast update. First of all, it is 107 and I am here. So everybody who knows how late I am to practically everything, I am actually on time because my appointment's not until 115. Also, I found out that my lights do work, or not my lights, my radio does work with, with showing me the time. I just can't have my lights on at the same time. I don't think, maybe it's just, you know what? Now that I'm playing with that switch that you can use to like dim or brighten your dashboard lights, yeah, evidently that was turned all the way down. So I feel like an idiot, but that's okay. That's my life. All right, so now I'm gonna go inside and get therapized. I am hoping and praying and wishing and whatever. Um, that I don't have to get weighed today. I think I'm gonna ask her. I know that I have to get weighed because I always get weighed, but clearly I haven't lost weight. I am pretty thick and fluffy, so I'm hoping that I can kind of like sweet talk her into not weighing me, but I will see you guys after my appointment and tell you guys what happened. So it looks like I was bragging for nothing because I just went inside and told them that I was there to see med clinic and the lady was like, oh, it's Monday. We don't have any med clinics on Monday. And I was like, no, I know it's today because it's my son's birthday. And I remember scheduling this appointment on his birthday so that I wouldn't forget. And then also having it done before he got home from school so that I'd be home when he got home. <laughs> yeah, I'm in Peru. I guess my appointment is in Logan Sport. So 
Oh, and also I thought it was at 115. No, it's at 145. So now I have to try to rush over to Logan Sport and try to get there in the next 30 minutes. I feel like an idiot. I don't know why this stuff always happens to me, but it does. The one time that I'm on time would of course also be the time that I'm in the entirely wrong location. I've never had med clinic at Logan Sport. I'm confused. All right, I need to stop talking and start driving right now. Okay, so I just finished med clinic and ooh, I'm dying. I <laughs> can't get my coat off. I showed up and I was actually on time still, even though I had to drive from Peru to Logan Sport. Ah, oh, but I started bawling my eyes out. I cried like a baby. You know, I thought that I wanted to do like a really in-depth um, life update, but I just do not feel emotionally stable enough to do it right now, especially since I have to drive home alone and I don't want to do any kind of emotional driving and go 90 miles an hour and get a ticket or hit all kinds of cars along the way. So I don't know. I think I'm just going to process this. I may or may not give a update later, but I might just wait. I have therapy next week. So I thought I had therapy today. I I'm so confused. I had my appointment time wrong. I had my appointment visits wrong. I had my locations wrong. Um, I don't know. I don't know if it's just like because it's Gavin's birthday. Maybe that's what is messing me up. But I think I'm just going to hold off on my appointment, on my appointment, on my life update and mental health update for my next video. Not my next video, but my next video involving therapy, which is next week. Because I don't make any sense. So I'm just going to get off of here and I'm going to drive home um, back to Kokomo. But yeah, I'll try to get a picture or a video of Gavin today blowing out his candles. Like I said, he's not getting his actual birthday present today. He's going to have to wait until I believe Wednesday to get that. But, um, yeah, I will see you guys back in Kokomo probably. And I might just focus on Gavin and his birthday for the rest of this vlog because I really don't want to deal with life anymore. But yeah, I will see you guys after a bit back in Kokomo. Okay. I think I'm finally ready to talk about men clinic and kind of explain what happened, it was just really emotional for me. I mean, I don't know. I like Wanda a lot. I think she is a great person. I saw her sister Bonnie first, and honestly, she was more on my level of being. She seemed to be more interactive. She seemed to, I don't know, I just got a different kind of vibe off of her, something that was a little bit more friendly, um, a little bit more open and not shut off where I feel Wanda kind of keeps more to distance, which I understand. I mean, she prescribes drugs to people who have mental illnesses. All right. I mean, it's not like she wants to be my best friend and like be on my Christmas card list or anything, but I didn't really want to talk about med clinic earlier, but I feel like I can talk about it now. Uh, the biggest thing is, yes, I ended up getting weighed. They did weigh me. I asked not to be weighed and she looked at me like I was crazy. Um, Sometimes she doesn't make me get weighed though, but today I guess she did. And <laughs> what are you doing, Rogi? <laughs> Rogi's behind the camera. She's filming me. <laughs> hey, baby, come here. Hold on, I have to show you my cat real fast. Rogi. 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 Hey, baby, what are you doing, baby? What are you doing? Do you want the water? What are you doing? <laughs> That's not your food. Watch this, you guys. This is so funny. <laughs> she loves the water on her. <laughs> it's literally running off her back. She's like, where did it go? <laughs> Do you see how wet she is? <laughs> so I ended up having to get weighed, which I hated. And I weighed 135 pounds, which is within the healthy, healthy range. But for me, I have literally never weighed that much, uh, except for when I was 39 weeks and one day pregnant with Ezra and I gained the most weight with him and I got up to 136 pounds 
And that was with me full term, pregnant, ready to go into labor, giving birth to an entire human being. And now like I have a food baby <laughs> and I'm 135 and I feel like it's not going to stop going up. Like I'm afraid I'm going to be 140, then I'm going to be 150, then I'm going to be like 200. And I know that that's irrational. I know that I have control, but one of my biggest things is I feel like while I'm not engaging in self-harm and I'm not, you know, feeling suicidal, which is kind of rare for me to not feel suicidal because I have BPD. So suicidal, um, suicide ideation just is kind of like part of the package deal, but I don't, I don't, I haven't felt suicidal for a really long time, probably the longest time ever. And, um, I kind of talked to her about it and I got kind of emotional. I cried a lot in her office. Um, and I talked to her about it and I said, I, I feel like I'm using food to hurt myself. Like I'm eating things that I know my body can't process. I'm eating things like, like gluten that I know I'm not supposed to have. Um, and then I'm eating them in excess so that I'm almost like punishing myself with food. Like I know I'm going to hate myself for eating half a pot of mashed potatoes. So I'm going to eat half a pot of mashed potatoes and probably some cookies. And it's like, I don't even have a desire for it. It's more out of like a negative, like punishment. And I feel like I'm using food as a means of self-harm because I'm going to be angry and I'm going to be upset and I don't feel like I'm worth it. So it's like, I went, I feel like I went from one extreme to the other. Like before, like I wouldn't eat because I didn't feel like I was allowed to eat. I didn't feel like I was worthy of taking up space. And now it's almost like, well, you fat pig, you're taking up the space. Well, at least you're going to be miserable while you do it. And then I'm just like cramming this food in my, in, in my mouth, down my throat. And I'm to the point that none of my Victoria's Secret leggings fit. And I had to buy those a couple months ago because none of my other leggings or pants fit. Then two weeks ago for my anniversary celebration with Anthony, I bought um, leggings. Well, I bought two pairs of leggings and a pair of jeans and the pair of jeans I'm all but like fitting in them. Like I'm really, I have like, I'm doing like the hair tie trick where you put it around the, the button and then you go through the loop and you put it back around the button and there are size two. So <laughs> I'm about ready to not be able to fit in those. I have no pajama pants. I have no sweats, uh, no leggings, no other pairs of jeans. Like I literally have nothing that fits me right now. Um, even like the hoodie I'm in right now, it just feels like suctioned on me. But she does think that I'm using food as a means of like self-punishment. So I've explained this before in other mental illness videos. But so when I go to med clinic, they give me a sheet of paper. And on one side, there's this chart I have to fill out. And they ask questions like, um, how depressed am I? You know, how does it affect my day-to-day -day interactions, how does it interfe interfere with like working, how am I sleeping, um, what's my alcohol levels, you know, am I feeling suicidal, am I engaging in self-harm, and then on the flip side, um, all of the questions are about anxiety, and it's like, you know, am I restless, am I sleeping, do I, do I worry all the time, do I feel like something's bad, something bad is going to happen all the time, and so she uses the number from both pages and one's like my depression number. The other is my anxiety number. And she was looking at them and she was just kind of like, wow. So she's been seeing me for two years now and I really haven't changed. Like I had a couple of months where I was doing really good and all of my numbers were higher and all of my checkoffs were like from this center, which is like sometimes to never where today it was like nearly every day to often. So I went from kind of one extreme, I, I'm like reverting back on my anxiety and depression. And she was kind of asking me what was going on. And, you know, I don't leave my house. I don't go anywhere. I mean, during Vlogmas, I went places, but I didn't go places by myself. I don't go to my friends' houses. I go shopping, yes. But when I go shopping, it's Target and Ulta, which both of those places feel safe to me. I feel very much like I'm isolating and I'm like secluding myself. And she excuse me, I keep repeating. She thinks that as well. So she ended up putting me on another medication. I'm still on Prozac. I'm still on, um, Xanax. But then she put me on another one and it's another anxiety medicine. It was either going to be Boost Bar or a uh, medicine that started with a V. And I said, go ahead and do that. Cause I don't think Boost Bar did much for me when I was on it. And I was on it for a long time and I took a high dosage. 
So I'm on a new medication, which I get filled tomorrow when I also pick up my Xanax and my Prozac. And then I go and see her in seven, no, eight weeks. I go and see her again in eight weeks so that she can do an update. It's not like things got notably worse, but they're not getting any better. And it is a backslide from where I was before at my last appointment. And I think she sees that. Like my blood pressure was great. And this time is the first time that I've ever gone in there and she didn't ask me to do labs. Uh, Cause normally I have to do an anorexia, anorexia panel. Uh, and that tests like my, my blood platelets, um, certain nutrients within my blood, my electrolytes, things like that. But she didn't have me do that. My mind automatically goes to, it's cause you're fat now. Um, again, I know that's not the case. I just feel stuck. I feel really, really stuck. I don't feel like I'm going forward in my treatment at all. Um, and, and in some ways I feel like I'm going backward, especially with the way that I'm using food to punish myself and hurt myself and make myself even lower. It's like, I know what I'm doing in my head, but like, I'm not making myself stop it. Yep. That's my little update. You guys, thank you very much for hanging out with me. Thanks for going to my clinic with me and putting up with my craziness. And yeah, I will see you guys in my next video. Please um, subscribe. I appreciate all of your guys' support and help. You, you just don't know how much it means to me, especially since I don't, I'm going to get emotional. <laughs> this is so stupid. Especially since I don't like get out and I'm not good with making connections with people and I'm not good with consistently building relationships. It's easy for me to get on camera and pretend like I'm busy and I'm active and oh, I'm here and I'm there. And it's like, really? Okay. You guys saw me go to Target. That's like the first time I've left my house in a week. So and I don't show the anxiety, the, the mental breakdown, me going into the bathroom and crying to the point that I puke and it's just, it's, it's really hard to live with mental illness because there's a lot of shame that goes with it. And I really do appreciate all of the support that I get from you guys. But with all that being said, I will see you guys in my next video. Uh, please subscribe and thumbs up this video. And yeah, have a great week. So bye.